Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at the temperature of stellar objects. So let's get started. It says here that if we can understand stellar temperatures, it can help us to find the current average temperature of the universe. When you look into the night sky, you will see the familiar sight of white pinpoints of light. If you look a little closer, however, you will see that many of them have a colour. The colour of a star tells us the surface temperature of that star, with red being the coolest and blue being the hottest. Now this goes against the kind of common sense way of thinking, because you probably associate with red being a warm colour and blue being a cold colour, but it's the opposite case for stars. So for stars, red is actually the coolest star and blue is actually the hottest star. So here's the range of colours going from coolest to hottest. So we've got red, orange, yellow, white and blue. And if you wanted to, you could come up with some sort of mnemonic to remember that order, such as run or you will burst, which is kind of getting at the idea of exercise or you will gain weight. And the key thing to understand in this section is this stuff that we're about to look at. So it says that stars emit radiation over a wide range of wavelengths, so a wide range of colours. If we plot the intensity of the emitted radiation against wavelength, we obtain a graph with a characteristic shape known as a black body radiation curve as shown below. So this is our black body radiation curve where we've got intensity of emitted radiation on the y-axis and we've got the wavelength of the emitted radiation on the x-axis. Now I'm going to just show you an animation to help you understand the parts of this graph. Now you can just ignore all this text but if you look at the graph here on the right hand side, what we're going to do is change the temperature and look at what the curve looks like for different temperatures. So right now we've got the black body radiation curve for a temperature of 1500 Kelvin. If we reduce that to say 1000 Kelvin, then your graph would look like this. So notice that the actual height of the peak has been reduced and the area under the graph has also been reduced. And if you look at the peak of the graph, you'll notice that it's shifted towards the right. So it's moved over here to a longer wavelength. If we go back now though to our 1500 Kelvin, and if we were now to increase the temperature above the 1500 Kelvin, we're going to see what happens to the peak and the area under the graph. So if I now increase from 1500 Kelvin to 2000 Kelvin, it looks like this. And notice that for the curve with a higher temperature, we've now got a larger area under the graph, which means more radiation is emitted per second, and the peak wavelength has also shifted to a lower value. So the peak wavelength has decreased as we've gone to a higher temperature. So looking back at our graph in the notes now, you should be able to see this first curve is for 3500 Kelvin, then we've got 4000 Kelvin, 4500, 5000 and 5500. So the higher the temperature, the more area under the graph and the taller the curve. So let's look at summarising some of the things from the graph. So it says from the graph we can see that stellar objects emit radiation over the complete electromagnetic spectrum. So that just means over all of the wavelengths, all of the colours. And we can see that from the graph because we're going from 0 nanometers all the way to 2000 nanometers. So we're definitely including the visible spectrum there as well, which was about 400 nanometers to about 700 nanometers. It also says that each stellar object has a peak wavelength that depends on its temperature. So if we look here for our different stellar objects, the different curves, we'll get different values of peak wavelengths for different temperatures. The third statement here is that as the temperature of the star increases, there is more radiation emitted per unit surface area per unit time, i.e. the area under the curve increases. That's something we've already seen. So if we look back to the graph, you'll see the area under each curve increases for increasing temperature. And lastly, it says that as the temperature of the star increases, the peak wavelength shifts to shorter wavelengths. So if you look here, if we were to put a little dot or a cross on the peak of the curve there, 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 there and there, we would actually be moving and shifting towards the left, which is actually going to a lower wavelength. So for stars of increasing temperature, we're tending towards a lower wavelength for the peak wavelength. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video one of these, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.